Hello guys, and welcome to episode 2, swore at you again, of Ask Yoshi. I think I did that last episode, and it was episode 1. So, I didn't do that on purpose. I genuinely didn't do that on purpose, that was actually a mistake. <laughs> wow, well, let me just take a sip of my drink. Mm. Anyway guys, welcome back to Ask Yoshi. If you don't know what this series is, it's a new thing I've started on my channel. It's kind of like my Q&As at the end of streams. Uh, you guys can send in questions. And I answer them, and I pick like five or six every episode that I just answer that I think are different, interesting, and you guys will actually be interested in the answer too. So we are back here in my awful lighting set out. Yeah, I know, it is horrible. Don't know what that face was. It is absolutely horrible, I am completely aware of that. Um, there's not much I can really do about that right now. I'm working on getting like a better lighting set up, but I can't do that until I get back from Boston because of costs and stuff. Anyway, let's jump straight into it here. I'm a bit annoyed because my internet has been... Flipping, freezing, and stuff. It's been the most unstable I have ever had it in the whole amount of like six years I've had it here. Uh, which is not good because this was meant to be the weekend where I recorded everything for PAX. Yeah. Guess that's not happening. I'm just looking down at it now. It's actually a stable blue right now, which means the light is on. It's actually a stable blue. I'm giving it five seconds until it goes orange again and starts flashing at me. Yeah, I, I freaking knew it. Yeah, okay, great. Right, so anyway, this one is from Anonymous. Um, I have started taking questions on my email setup now as well. So, if you want to find out how you can ask me questions, all the link, uh, well, all the information is down in the description just before you get started. Uh, and if you do email me, guys, if you want your name read out, please give me your YouTube name. If you don't give me your YouTube name, I will assume you want it to be anonymous. Because when you send an email over, half of the time it will give you your real name. It will give me your real name. And I don't know whether you guys want that out there or not. So I don't want to risk it, really. Anyway, first one is anonymous and it says, Can you speak another language? Quick answer to this. Sadly, no, I can't. Um, I've always wanted to. If I was ever going to speak another language, I think it would be like Japanese. Um, if you're wondering why I chose Japanese, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm really fascinated by the letters. I don't think, can you even call them letters? I don't think they're letters, they're like symbols or something, but I'm really fascinated by that. I've always wanted to do that, and I actually tried for like a month to try and learn it, and it just didn't happen. And that's because I am really not a language person, by which I mean, it doesn't mean I don't want to learn a language. No, that'd be pretty cool. I would like to be bilingual, but I, my brain just does not register, no matter how much I want it to, just not register languages going in. Um, I got ungraded in my French exam, if you want to know a bad piece of information about me, uh, which gives you an idea of just how bad I am at it. I think the most nervous I have ever been in my school career at multiple points was always in the French oral exam. No puns about the oral exam. Uh, was always in the French oral exam. Yeah, it's flashing again. Uh, because uh, it wasn't more like, oh crap, what grade am I going to get? It was like, okay, I'm going to get a U, but I'm going to make a fool out of myself to the freaking teacher and recording machine. And then that tape gets sent off to someone who, I don't know, hearing me speak absolute crap that isn't French. Half of the time I made up words. And I just kind of got nervous about that, which is weird because I was, well, I still am quite dramatic. Um, I, I've always been into theatre. I'm, I'm actually a drama scholar. Fun. Yoshi fact of the episode, although I'm sure there'll be loads of these in Ask Yoshis. Um, I'm actually a drama scholar, so I'm kind of used to being in front of like a crowd and all that kind of stuff, and you know, with you guys. It's kind of different on YouTube, like you can't say I'm talking in front of a crowd, because it is just like you're talking to a camera and then you upload it later, you don't really get nervous about uploading something, or at least I don't. I don't know many people who do. Do you guys, if you upload videos, do you ever get nervous about uploading it? Who knows? Tell me in the comments. Um, but you know, so it's kind of weird for me to do that, especially actually, I guess the French oral exams were kind of like YouTube, you know, except there was, you know, there was a person there, but you're talking to a machine and then it gets sent off somewhere. That's exactly like YouTube, actually. So I don't know. I think it was just because I could not speak the language at all and it was just a horrific experience. So there was that. Um, that kind of evolved into a when were you nervous at school question, but there you go. Sadly, I can't speak another language. I would love to. Who knows? Maybe in the future I will give it another go. I can't verify anything. It's kind of like, it, it's tricky with me. Some people aren't. My mom can't either. Fun fact of the Yoshi mother. I don't know. My mother cannot speak languages either. Uh, my mother. 
God, I'm getting all posh with you guys. Uh, my mum can't speak languages either, and she never has been able to. Although she was good at history, and I suck at history too. I think I'm just good at, like, theatre and media, and that's it. It's probably it. Anyway, I'm fine with that, because those are the two things I really enjoy in life, so, oh well. That's, that's cool. Anyway, on to the next question again. Another anonymous one. Are you ever going to do Minecraft maps with the crew? Uh, so... I'll give you a bit of like a, I guess a prelude to this, if you don't know who the crew are. Uh, it's a group that I'm a part of, it's just, we're a bunch of good friends, we've known each other for quite a few years now actually. Uh, some of them I've known for almost two years, a lot of them I met when I first joined the crew at the start of last summer. Um, namely, Munching Orange, who is an awesome friend of mine, and actually, uh, earlier today he hit 100,000 subscribers, so a little shout out, congratulations Mo. Uh, go with him, congratulations. Not in my comment section, because he won't see that. Go tweet him or something, I don't know. And tell him Yoshi sent you. Do it. Do it right now. At Munching Orange. Congrats on 100k subs. Love from Yoshi. Write it. Or love from the Yoshi eggs or something. I don't know. Pfft. How did this evolve into that? Um, so that's what the crew is, if you guys wondered what that question was all about. And, uh, I already have, is the answer. Fine, they haven't been up on my channel. Um, although I guess, like, people, individual people, have been up on my channel from the crew, of course, but we haven't, I haven't had anything on my channel that's been everyone in the crew on it, but we have done that, we've done Minecraft maps, um, we've done some parkour stuff, we've done Hunger Games, we've done Terraria, that was fun, go check out the Terraria one, that was a really good series, actually, and, uh, they're all over on the crew channel, which is youtube.com forward slash the crew hub, go check it out, it's a bunch of fun, and we're actually going to be recording uh, a lot of stuff at PAX, Pax, I am leaving... What's the date? Well, I know the day is Saturday night. Actually, no, it's Sunday now. Um, no, it's Saturday night. Oh, God, I don't know what's going on. Um, but I leave on Wednesday night. I've actually, speaking of theatre, going back to that last one, I've got my last theatre exam, uh, my practical. On that Wednesday, I was going to leave the Tuesday night and get there like a day early and settle in and everything, but I couldn't do that because my exam is literally on the Wednesday night, so I go straight from my exam to the airport. Fun Yoshi fact number two. I'm going to have loads of these fun Yoshi facts. They just kind of come out of nowhere. I'm dealing them out to you like a like a waiter deserves, uh, like, deals out shit. I don't know. Anyway, question number three. So there you go. I have done Minecraft maps with the queue. Uh, the queue. The crew. Uh, go check them out. They're a bunch of fun. I've said a bunch of fun enough already. I'll try to stop that. Next one is from E-Man. Uh... And he submitted three questions, but I thought it would be a bit unfair to answer all three from one person. So, if you do submit a question, just make it one. And make it have, like, one part. Because I know how tricky you guys are. You could submit one question, but it has three parts or something. Sorry, but uh, I chose the one that I felt you guys would be more interested in. Anyway, uh, and he says, why do you always record so late at night? Uh, well, there's th this is kind of a two-part answer. Firstly, I guess from the British perspective I do record really late at night for example it's nearly 1 a.m. over here see here it is Sunday um so I guess from the British perspective I do but I'm actually on an American time zone when I work on YouTube um I know that sounds really weird a lot of you may already know this because of my streams and stuff and actually if you if you think about how well the times that I upload my videos you can actually kind of figure out that I might be um but if you're wondering why I do that, it's because pretty much 80% at least of the people I work with and my friends and everything like that online are from America. So if I was to, you know, do a normal school day or whatever, get home and then not go to sleep, because to get around that I go to sleep for a few hours, then wake up, then do YouTube, then go to school, then sleep. So I, I switch like YouTube and sleep pretty much. Um, if I was to If I was to do a normal thing, which is YouTube, then sleep, then school, then YouTube, then sleep, it, it it wouldn't work, because by the time they either get back from whatever they're doing, work, college, school, university, whatever, or, you know, they wake up or whatever, then it's like, by the time that happens, it's already like 10pm for me here, and I would probably need to go to sleep, because I sometimes need quite a lot of sleep, sometimes I don't. It's really weird, the most vague answer I could have ever given. I know, that's brilliant! <laughs> wow. But, uh, you know... <laughs> It just wouldn't work, like, the times, and I'd only get to, like, do two hours, three hours of stuff with them, and that would either be recording or hanging out. And I want to chill with my friends as well. I don't want to just be on a YouTube basis. I don't want to just say, okay, I like you, let's record, and then I don't talk to them when I'm not recording. That's that's not what I like to do, you know? So, 
it just doesn't work, which is why I switched it around. That, plus I've always had this kind of thing where I feel better working at night, even if I'm tired. So if I'm looking out the window and I see it's really, really dark, and I know in the UK it's nighttime, but I'm tired, I feel more productive than if I got home and I didn't sleep and I see it's daylight outside or it's starting to turn night, and I'm not tired, I, st I don't feel as productive. I know that's really weird. Maybe some of you can relate to that. Um, I've had a few people tell me they do feel productive at night. I don't know, I think it's that kind of thing, like, you've had a normal day, and it's really hectic, and then you come home, and there's no kind of period of time where you can relax and, like, get out of that first mode and get into a second mode of work. I think that might be what it is. I'm not sure. I really haven't looked into it that far, but that could be what it is. Uh, I said there was a second part to this question, and I... Oh, yeah, I was about to say I can't remember what it is, but I remember. Um, also, I am a gamer. Gamers are notorious for doing stuff late at night themselves. So, think about it like this. I'm on an American time zone, but then I'm also on an American gamer time zone to work with my friends. So, when they start doing stuff is late, like, getting afternoon slash night for them, so it's really early morning for me. I hope that kind of explains it, like, I, I guess some of that was quite vague. I tried to describe it as well as I could. It's all pretty much just up here. Um, it works in my own mind, but I, I know a lot of people really don't get it. There are some people in, uh, like, in my real life who are just like, Yoshi, they don't call me Yoshi, they call me Hugh. Um, I actually find myself calling, I find me calling myself Yoshi a lot of the time, which is weird? I don't know, I kind of like it. Um, but they're like, Yoshi, what are you doing? This doesn't make sense. What are you doing? You, cr you crazy bastard. I'm just like, hey, it works for me. I don't care. If it works, in the end of the day, if something works for you, if it's weird and it's not against the law, then do it. I don't care. That's how you guys should see it. Some of, like, some people in the UK, like, who watch my videos get really pissed off that I do this. I'm just like, I don't get why. Like, fine, I stream late at night. I stream at like, well no actually I stream at 10.30pm on a Saturday. It's a Saturday, stay up and watch my stream. Um, <laughs> I'm being harsh with you guys. Um, the, I can kind of understand, but in the end of the day if I'm uploading a video a bit too late for you guys, just watch it in the morning. And trust me this really does work a lot better for me than doing any other time schedule would, which is why so a lot of people say, Yoshi, please switch, please switch, it would make me, my life of watching your videos easier. And I do respect that, and I do understand that, and if there was a way I could do that, I would. But it just works out so much better for me. So, there you go, guys. That, t that kind of turned emotional. It's like, don't change this! No, question number four. <laughs> Piano playing Mario. Da -da 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 what was that song? I tried to say Mario in my head, and it just didn't work. Piano playing Mario. Um, by the way, before I do anything, he says uh, he said he sent me a really nice message before. I'm not going to read out messages you send before, guys. If you do want to send me, if you want to email it, because if it's like a personal message or something uh, that you want to email to me, you know, and um, just have me read, not on camera. I will know not to read it on camera. But you know, want to check me out? This guy sent a really nice message, and um, it it was just really nice to read. So if you guys want to do that. And uh, that's always cool. But he says, so thanks for the nice message, man. It really does mean a lot that you send that. Anyway, he says, if you're low on money, should you still try and invest in video equipment? Now, this is really interesting he asked this. Because the day after I chose this question, uh, I think it was Direwolf20 on Twitter um, linked something from maybe Dutroid, who, uh, who posted this amazing link for this, like, bidding website, and you may think, ah, oh, those things are scams. Well, this, uh, actually, this wasn't a bidding website, it was a buying website. But, um, they had very limited stock, and they were doing, like, a two-day deal, so by the time this video goes out, sorry, it is kind of expired. Uh, but they were actually selling, like, Blue Yeti mics for $40. Brand new. Blue Yeti mics, those are insane. I'm using, I'm using a snowball right here, you can, you can see the snowball, right? I'm using a snowball. And that was so much more. And this is like the lower version of that. I want to upgrade to a Blue Yeti soon as well. But I think this will be fine for now, you know. Um, so that that was really nice. So there's always these kind of deals around. I just wanted to make you kind of aware of that before I uh, before I delved into this question. So that if you, if you know you are on low on money and you do really want to buy this, then go for it. Just look around. Don't buy the first place you find it. And don't... Don't just kind of buy it from the official store. I know that's really bad to say, but uh, yeah, there, there are some really good places you can buy it from. Actually, I have my own kind of story with this snowball. I bought this off eBay. 
Uh, this was brand new. It came boxed. It came with a pop filter and the shock mount. The shock mount, guys. I'll turn you around a second. The shock mount is this round thing round here. And uh, while this doesn't have as much effect now because I've got it on an arm, uh, where I don't have the stand, I would show you. Um, when I uh, when I was just having it on a stand on my table, which it comes oh, on the stand as well, it came with um, on the stand on the table, which I'm guessing is pretty much what most people will have. Uh, I invested in that because it's just so much more convenient, but. When you're like, especially for gaming, actually, when you're like tapping on the keys, like, you know, that's not, I'm just tapping on my laptop, but like doing that, it picks up the vibrations and it makes it really, really annoying. Like it's kind of like bass in the background and you don't want that. Um, that's, that's really annoying to hear. I've done everything I can to actually make my key clicks and my mouse clicks as quiet as they possibly can, just so it's my voice while I'm playing. Uh, so if you fit that on it, it actually kind of takes those out because any, uh, kind of vibrations or anything traveling up through the stand into the microphone get absorbed by these kind of rubber bands uh, around around the mount and it's really really useful so that sells for like $80 in itself I could be wrong on that price now but when I bought it it was like $80 the mic was 90 or something and the pop filter is like $10 pop filters are crazy cheap uh, but I got um, I got the whole package all of those things pop filter microphone stand and uh, and shock mount so four items worth for $70, buy it now on eBay, brand new, unboxed. So there's always those really kind of weird things you can uh, find around the internet that really do help you with money. And that was actually the first time I ever really kind of said, you know what, I will trust this eBay buy. I've always been a bit skeptical about eBay for some reason. I don't know, it's just kind of in my blood. But, you know, I think that's a pretty good testament as to why you should actually give it a shot. Anyway, on to the actual question, should we do that? That sounds like a good idea. Um, if you're low on money, should you still try and invest in video equipment? It depends how much it means to you, how much, how much dedication you want to put into it, and just how low, I think, on money you really are. Uh, actually, it depends on what the video equipment is as well. If it's like a really big, powerful desktop computer so you can record super high FPS videos, uh, maybe hold off on it for a little bit, because those things run expensive. Trust me, I'm buying one in a couple of months. Trust me, the prices are horrible on those. But, I don't know, if it's something like a microphone, maybe some, he maybe a headset, um, I'm trying to think what else you could get. Maybe some software to record, like Fraps, DX Tory, editing software. It, it depends on the price and how low you are on money. I'm not going to do any examples, because there are so many different examples out there. But it's all about budgeting. If, if this is something that you really want to get invested in, you really want to work towards, you really want to dedicate a lot of time to, then I personally see it as a very worthwhile investment. Again, this is all about how you feel on spending money. Um, I, I think in Ask Yoshi episode one, I may have said this, if not, it was a stream. But back, no, it was a stream. Back when I, uh, back when I wasn't making my own living and, you know, my own money and everything like that, you know, I, the moment I got some cash from my parents or I got the odd bit of money every now and then, I would just spend it straight away. And, you know, a couple of days later, I'd be like, okay, cool, I've got this headset, but now I don't have any money to spend. Now that I'm actually making my own, I hate spending money. I like saving it. Um, so it, it's all about how you... <coughs> Voice crack. It's all about how you budget and how hard that spend is going to hit you. If spending $80 for a microphone is going to hit you quite hard and it's not going to be something you're going to use on a daily basis or like a bi-daily basis or whatever you want, maybe hold off on it. It's it's all about time and stuff. It, it, this is a really hard question to answer, but I, I did want to answer it because this is something a lot of people ask me about. So I hope this, ad, uh, this answer has been adequate for you. Uh, I know it was very, very vague and it really didn't give anything away, but I kind of feel that's the only answer I can give because, again, there are so many situations, in, especially in this day and age with all of this fiscal cliff and everything. Um, I don't even understand it, but all this fiscal cliff and everything that we're on, um, it, it's just tricky. I think tricky is the word to describe it. So do whatever you feel right with, I think is the right way to end that question. So there you go, guys. There's that question. Anyway, uh, five, Sumerai. He told me in the email how to say his name, and in my Word document I didn't put how to say it, and I feel like I butchered it. Sumurai. 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 One of those. Uh, he says, how did you meet other YouTubers? Uh, this is another question I get quite a lot. You're noticing, I get, I'm answering right now a lot of questions I get a lot. That's kind of the point. I want to get a lot of the more popular ones out of the way, so you guys have somewhere to go 
for me to give you like a definite answer. Uh, and then later in these, this series, you know, we will answer really, really obscure ones and cool stuff like that. Uh, so how did I meet other YouTubers? By saying hello. Now, I know that sounds really crazy and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, ah, I try to get... Uh... Munching Orange, let's use Mo as an example. I try to get Munching Orange's attention in his comments, and, you know, he doesn't answer me. Now, there's... It's very tricky. Um, I remember I started off, and of course, you know, I had the natural urge. I wanted to meet people that were right up there right at the start. You know, I wanted to meet all these people getting hundreds of thousands of views back in, like, 2009, which back then, those kind of views were absolutely insane. Uh, that was like what Ray William Johnson was getting on a good day. And, you know, I wanted to meet all these people. I just wanted to be like, this is a community I want to be a part of, but I want to have a head start. I want to be there straight away. I'm going to break a very, very harsh truth for you guys. And you may not like it. You may find it totally reasonable. And I hope you find it reasonable because you understand why this is the way it is. You're not going to... Well, the chances of you meeting someone very, very high up, like on your on day one, is very, very slim. Because there are probably hundreds of thousands of other people just like you trying to do the same thing. Now, here's where it kind of gets to me where I'm like, but that's not what YouTube's about. And it's not. To me, YouTube is about the people who aren't popular but are genuinely nice people. You know, you shouldn't aim. And I know what it's like. I, I know there is that need. And that want, not need, but that real, real want to meet these really high up people to say, I know this person, look at me, I'm awesome. Uh, <laughs> that was a really weird way of phrasing it. Um, but it's it's not about that. It's about anyone you meet, and no matter what size they are, it's about their personality. I have met some of the greatest people I know, honestly, through doing what I do. And I didn't meet with them and I didn't say hello to them because I thought, oh, this guy has loads of subscribers or this guy is, you know, really, really popular in the community. I met them because I maybe watched one of their videos and I thought, this guy's really nice, you know, he's funny, he seems like someone I'd get along with. Or I just happened to come across them. For example, let's use the crew. The reason I, the, the way I got in with the crew is Sully commented on one of my videos when I was about 3,000 subscribers. He was smaller than me. And he said, you know, hi to me. He sent a really nice comment. He was just saying, you know, you've got really, really cool videos. You seem like a really chill guy. And I Skyped him. And, you know, I... It's not like I thought back then, oh, this guy is not only going to become really big, but he's going to be able to get me in with all these other people. I'm going to meet so many people through him. I thought, this guy's a really nice guy. Let me add him on Skype. Let me chill with him. You know? It's, it's a long process. It's like making friends in real life, really. You don't just go up to, like, a celebrity and say, hi, I'm your friend. Let's, let's work together. Let's do this. You know, you, you meet people and that's trying to, that's really where I'm trying to go with this. Um, don't try and make friends over size. Try and make friends over the people they are inside. That sounds really, really sobby, but that, that's, that's just what it is. I don't really know how else to phrase it. I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying there. Um, but that's kind of it, you know, just, just do that. And who knows where it will take you. There is always that possibility that people may become big, you may become big, and you might be able to help out your friends. You know, when I met Dan, for example, he had, I think, about 3,000 subscribers, and he was really excited about get, trying to get to 5,000 before Minecon, and I wanted to help him out, because he's a genuinely nice guy. You know, I met him as soon as I could at Minecon. He's one of the nicest guys I have ever met, and I, I count myself lucky to have him as a friend, because, as I said, he is a really nice guy. And if I'm able to help him out, then... So be it, you know, I want him to succeed because he deserves it. He works really, really hard at what he does. So there you go. That's kind of how I met other YouTubers, not through saying like, let's work together, let's do this, through just saying hello to random people. And I met people through people, meeting people through people. That's what it is. Anyway, I'll move on to the next question. This is the last question of the day. Uh, we have we have tackled some really hard hitting issues today. I'm feeling productive. I was going to record loads of online stuff. I couldn't do it because my internet's down. Yeah, still down. What am I going to do? I'm going to own it up on some offline stuff. Anyway, Poxabox. I love this name. Poxabox. Rolls off the tongue. Uh, number six, Poxabox says, What was the most memorable video series you've ever done? 
<laughs> I chose myself a really hard one uh, to finish this series up, uh, this series, this episode off with. I really did. This is a really hard one for me to finish. And I kind of want to give a few answers. And uh, I know this probably isn't what Pox of Box is asking for. And he or she is like, hey, that's you're not answering my question. I'm answering it in a different degree than you expected. But I hope you still, you know, enjoy the answer. Um, so I have a few memorable series. And for different reasons. So most memorable in different categories, I guess. Count it as like the Oscars, okay? The Yoshi to Mario Eggscars. I don't know. Sounds like something you'd give out at Easter. Hey, Yoshi, can I have an extra? Yes. Yes, you can. I want an extra now. What is an extra? I don't know. Anyway, so... The first one I'm going to count is Super Mario Galaxy 2. Uh, this is way, way, way back in my YouTubing history. Uh, this is one of the third or fourth video series that I did. And uh, this was where... I've answered this before, actually. This was where I really started to blossom. Uh, that sounds really, really camp. This is where I really started to like come out of my shell, realize who I was on the internet, how I wanted to present myself. My commentary style, most of all, is what I'm, I'm you know, trying to say here. It was when I figured out how I wanted to be, how I wanted to talk, like all of that kind of stuff. And it was when I started to feel really kind of at ease with myself, presenting myself to viewers, I think, as well. Um... And because of that, a lot of a lot more people started watching that series. You know, I remember I uploaded one, and I think I got like a thousand views in two days on one of them. And I just freaked out. And it was amazing. And that was when I thought, yeah, this is, this is something I'm really going to enjoy. Um, so there's that, number one, for most memorable. And uh, kind of, I think that's my Roots video, you know. Uh, it, it was the one I had a lot of fun with. That was the series up to that point I had had the most fun with. And, uh... It, it was a very good time, is what I'm trying to say. Second of all, I'm going to say Survival of the Yoshi, which is very apt because we're coming up on uh, 100 episodes, which is crazy. And that's partly the reason this is another memorable series for me. This is going to be the first series I've ever reached 100 episodes in. Fine, a lot of the series that I do wouldn't kind of enable me reaching 100 episodes because there's just not enough to do in them or the story doesn't go that far or something like that. But... I've reached 100 episodes in this. Well, I've, I nearly have. I'm on, I've just finished recording episode 99, actually. Earlier tonight. Look at that little sneaky preview. And uh, uh, it, it was it's quite a milestone. I never thought I'd reach 100. It, I put a lot of dedication into that, you know. I mean, if you click on the playlist that I've organised those videos into, the playlist, to give you an idea of how retro it is, it's just called Minecraft. I need to rename that, actually. I need to rename it to Survival of the Yoshi or Minecraft Survival of the Minecrafting Yoshi. I don't know. I like Survival of the Yoshi, the title. I came up with it halfway through the series as well. So it didn't start out as Survival of the Yoshi. I just thought it sounded good and I named it that and yeah, everything worked out. But we've had a lot of fun times with that. I, I think that's the series for most memorable that I can put under... Well, actually memorable. See, I, the way I said that, it makes it sound like my other series aren't memorable. That's not what I mean. I mean, I can look back on so many different recording sessions of that and just laugh and have memories. There are so... Because survival... Vanilla survival in Minecraft, you can do pretty much anything you want. And you can have any adventure you want. You can set your own goals. And that's something I've tried to do all throughout Survival of the Yoshi. And there's just been so many times when I've done something I didn't expect. Or we've been on an amazing adventure and we've had a lot of fun. And I think that's just why I'm counting this as one of my most memorable video series. Because... It's just been so much fun. I mean, look back at episode 98. That was the episode. It was episode 98. Yeah, it was. Where we uh, we were lost and then we came across the first base we made. That was the most fun moment of the series for me because it was just shock and it was shared with you guys and all that kind of stuff. So there's Survival of the Yoshi under that series. And uh, I'm going to do one more memorable video series as well, I think. And this one is a lot harder for me to say. Because there's a lot of other series that could go under this category, but I think another of my most memorable is mem memorable. Memorable has been uh, Parkour Versus, and there's a few reasons for this one actually. Firstly, it was the first ever co-commentary series I've done with Tyler, and I'm hoping for there to be many more in the future. Spoilers alert! But uh, it, it was. It's not like it's the first commentary I've ever done. But I had a lot of fun with it. That's where I think I came out of my shell for code commentaries. And since then, you know, I've done stuff with so many people and it's it's been an amazing time. And you guys have really enjoyed that. 
But I've just had a lot of fun with Tyler. He's been an awesome friend since the like day I met him. I actually remember it. Uh, it was I was I've been friends with Josh Jepson for a bit longer than he has, and uh, uh, Tyler got in contact with me because we were doing like a collaborative video for Josh's 18th birthday, and he knew me as one of Josh's friends. And then we met through that and we started talking, and. I've just had a lot of fun with it, is what I'm trying to say. You're noticing kind of like this motif in all of my memorable series is that I've just had a lot of fun with them all for different reasons. And that's why Parkour Versus. Plus, I've got to play a lot of your guys' maps. That's awful grammar, but I've got to play a lot of your maps. And just seeing the community involvement with that, I think that was the first series. I've had so many more since then, but I think that was the first series that really got my community involved. So many maps were made. So many kind of like opinions were given, comments, all of that kind of stuff. And it drew in a lot of my new kind of viewers as well from that. So that was a really good time. That was a really good time. Whew. So this has been like half an hour of me just talking to a camera. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. So thank you guys. I hope you've enjoyed all the answers to the questions. I know quite a few of them in this episode were actually quite vague and I guess muttered. I don't know. Um... But I kind of chose ones that kind of prompted that, that were very vague and required a very wide scale answer that I guess I'm not in the position to give just yet. But I hope you guys have taken something from it anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Ask Yoshi. As always, don't forget to submit a comment, uh, submit a question even. You can either tweet me, no, you can YouTube PM me. Don't tweet me, I won't count it. You can either YouTube PM me, you can put a question in the comment section, or the preferred method here, guys, is you can email me the question, and if you want your name read out, please do submit your YouTube name in that email, don't forget, to askyoshi at yoshidemario.com. That email address is mine, and uh, that is just dedicated for this series. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed episode two. I'm going to swear at you again, because I can. Hope you've enjoyed episode two of Ask Yoshi. I've been Yoshi, you've asked me stuff, and I'll see you guys later.